begin the current daf in Mesechtes Ksubis Daf Nun Gimel. We begin on the bottom of Nun Beis Mabeis, three lines up at the bottom of the Amid, where the Gemara continues this, what's known as Ksubis Bedin Dechrin. We were speaking about the Tnoi Ksubis, the stipulations of the Ksubis, even if you didn't write it, it's really included in it. And one of them was that the male son of this wife is going to inherit her Ksubis. So the Gemara continues with a story related to that. Shizko is Ponsor Kazik in the Cheskel Tan, Tam Daf Achem, Shin Ebn Trin, today's Daf. One of the tzadikim who is like we mentioned, benin dechren de haver lechem menoy, that the male sons, if the wife dies before him, inun yatrin kesek suba basayach, they're going to inherit the money of your kesuba. Yes, they're going to have the machu. I mean, they're going to have the going to split the yerusha with the other wives' kids, but they're going to get specifically only them their mother's suba. Additionally, we have a tzadik suba benon nukvan, the females that you have from me. When I pass away, they're going to stay in my house and they're going to get fed from the state until they move on. Another one is that you are going to stay in the house and you're going to get fed from the state all the days that you're waiting on the house. The Manus is a woman who was engaged by, got married by her mother or her brothers because she was a widow. That's a rabbinic marriage that she could refuse. Erva Shnia is a Isidra abundant type of an Erva. And why do we have a Ksubis? Because they tell you by is that we don't want it to be easy for the husband to just get rid of his wife. So the Gemara continues with this Allah of Ksubis with the and says the Gemara. Three lines of the Lalam Yomadaf and Beis Mabes. Rapapa i Asik Le Libre. Rapapa was engaged, not engaged in that way, meaning busy with his son, the Abbasuda, with the family of Abbasuda, which that was actually Rapapa's father in law. Rapapa went and married off his son to his sister in law, to his wife's sister. So it was all in the family. And Azul, he was going. Rapapa to the to the house of the girl's father. That um, and lemichtem Ksuba ksubasa to go ahead and write her ksuba, and there her father, the father of the girl, will write in the nod and whatever he's going to write for what what he's giving as a dowry. Now Shama Yehuda ben Merema, Yehuda ben Merema heard that Rapapa was on his way to the house of the Abbasura. And Nafik Ose is Chazal. He went and he he, he he appeared before him. He he met him. They walked together. Kimat Lepischa. When they came to the entryway of Abba Surah's house, have a commitment. So Yehuda took permission from a Papa to take leave from him. So my Papa said to him, Neil my brother, come into me with Abba Surah. We simcha the tnoim and mamer shap the dixiba. Come in with me. So the Gemara continues having a gimel with Aleph Chazir. Papa saw to la have a nechale. Yehuda didn't want to come into the house. Amalei says, "My daitach, what what is it that you're thinking?" Misham the Amalei Shmuel of Yehuda is because what Shmuel said to Yehuda. Shmuel said to Yehuda, "Shin the sharp one, loy tahave ba'avuri achsante. You shouldn't be part of when Yerusha is being given over. I feel like a bishul bratu, even from a bad son to a good son. Why? Why isn't? Why don't you? Shouldn't you shouldn't be party to that? Because the late year my zara nafik and you don't know what the kids are going to be from their kids. So." Don't think that you, it's a good thing that you're taking a Ryush that belongs to one and giving it to someone else. No, not necessarily, because even the bad son, he might have, you know, sometimes you see this, 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 uh, you know, I'm sure you shouldn't take Yerusha from a son to a daughter. And here I'm doing that because what's happening is, is Abba Sada is going to write for his daughter what was fit to be inherited by his sons. So, so therefore, maybe you're not coming in because you don't want to be party to this. That, Abba Sada is going to be writing a big nadin for his daughter, which is wrong because you're taking away the Yerusha that belongs to the sons. What do you mean? There's also a binding institution. Because which you quoted on the previous daf, that we want the father to write a big nadin to his daughter, and we looked that out from apostate because that's what gets people to want to marry the girls. So what's your problem? Why aren't you coming in? So Amalei said to him, Yeah, but Hanim Midaite. This that we want the father to write a big nadin is only willingly. La and Ami? You think it's also to force him? So Malay, so he said to him, Rapapa said, What Atum mi kamin loch? The Elvasa? You think I said you should come in and we're going to swing him? We're going to force him to write a big nadin for his daughter? Well, the Maloy Tasi came in. I said, Come in and don't force him. Amalei says, You don't understand. Maloy Didi, if I come in with you to his house when you guys are riding up the Ksuba, Hainu Asye. That's going to force him to make a huge nadin 
because my honor, the Rebbe is here, this net, and it's like he's going to feel intimidated, he's going to want to write a large thing. That's why I'm not coming in. But the Maestro says the Gemara, Ach the Papa forced Yehuda with words, Ba'ul, and he came in with him to Abbasidah. Ishtik v'yasim. So, he didn't want to say anything. He was quiet, and he was sitting there. Now, the problem is, Savrahu, Abbasidah thought, that the reason why Yehuda is being quiet, is mirtach ratach, is steaming. That, you know, you're quiet, you know, you're brigis, you're not, you're not saying anything, passive-aggressive, you know, that, that this is not an appropriate, uh, that's what you're giving, so Kasvi the Chomad Havli, he wrote off everything he owned in the Nadim. Masayf Amale at the end, he said to him, he said, Hashtanamale Mishlama, you're still not talking? I, he says, Chai the Mar, the life of the Master, I didn't leave over anything of Pruta in my, I wrote off my whole bank account. So Amale, so you said to him, he says, Even though did he, if you take counsel from me, I follow Hai Nami the Chasvis, even that what you wrote, Loy Nichali, I don't. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't like that because you wrote it because of me, which I didn't want that to be like that. So Malay says, I thought you were being quiet because you're upset. He says, Hash Nami Hadabi? Could I back out now also? Malay says, Shabi Nafshach Hadrana, to make yourself into someone who backs out, look at me, that I didn't say. <laughs> and therefore, he was, he, he, this was the situation. We didn't want to force him, but like he wrote off everything because of that. Now the Gemara continues in a related discussion that Boi Menei Rav Yemer Saba Merav Nachman Rav Yemer the Elder asked Rav Nachman following question which gets us into interesting conversations over here Mach Reksuba Labala If a woman sells her Ksuba to her husband Mach Reksuba is, a, is a basically a, a document a, de, a, de, a debt, a deed that's owed from the husband to the wife She has her Ksuba, nice beautiful Ksuba rolled up somewhere where she knows where it is and she always wants to know where it is She goes to the husband and says You're not giving me, I want to buy a Tennis priest, I want to buy something. I have no money. You could buy the ksuba. She sells the ksuba to the husband. The question is, yes, the ksuba is bin dechren. Do we still have the halacha of ksuba is bin dechren? That when she dies and then the husband dies, her children will inherit her ksuba? Or in ksuba is bin dechren? Or do, do we not have any more the halacha of ksuba is bin dechren? What's the question? Do we say since she sold the ksuba to her husband? So that means to say, this removes the inheritance of her father to bequeath her nadunya to, to his daughter's sons. Why? Because she sold that. And all the illusion that was only coming from the husband, and therefore they have to divide equally with all the other sons from the, the children of the two wives. So only Rabbi Rabbi says to uh, Rabbi Yemir Saba, he says, V'tibay lech machelas. Why are you asking such an uncommon case when the woman sells her to her husband? Why don't you ask regarding a case when she, she's Michael, she pardons, which is something more common than selling it. And if it's because that she gets no benefit when she's being Michael, but still ultimately she removed the rights that she has in the Ksuba when she's still alive, why are you asking Dafka Mecheles? You should ask by even Mecheles. She's Michael, and now she, maybe we, she, she has no more Ksubas within Dichr. So Malay said to him, what? Do you think that because of the benefit that she gets for selling, that's why I'm entertaining to say that's why maybe she would lose the rights in contrast to Mechelis, that you're thinking, oh, why didn't I ask Mechelis that, oh, sh that shouldn't be the criterion? You think that's the reason why I thought I was asking Mechelis because she gets Hanoah, maybe that's why she's losing it? And, and, and you're thinking that I didn't think it would be the case by Mechelis that you have to tell me I should ask by Mechelis too? What do you mean? Hash the Mechelis to the contrary. If when she's selling her ksuba, which obviously she's in the state of duress, Kumibayli, I am having the question, I'm still entertained to say that she's going to lose her rights. The Avagav Dikil, although you could say that Zuzian Sua, what's forcing her, she needs money. The husband doesn't want her to go on this vacation. She's like, here, I'll sell you the ksuba. But she's obviously only doing under duress. I can tell you, it's like as if you, someone's being hit with a hundred hits with a strap that at the tip have iron points, which is like this weight that is called the uchla, that's very pointy, that even over there I'm entertained to say that even though she's being forced, which she has no choice because her husband's not giving her a penny, that still I'm saying that she, maybe she's going to lose her rights. Machelis, mebalia? You think I had a question regarding Machelis where she's not being forced? That of course I could say that she wouldn't get the ksuba because she's not being forced. He thought that she wasn't asking regarding Machelis like as if like, 
oh, maybe Michael she won't lose the rights to the contrary. If anything, Michael for sure will lose the rights. Because my is like not because the no, but is like giving force to. Maybe then she shouldn't lose the rights. Michael is for sure. Al Kabanim, that was the question regarding these cases. Some Rabbi Rabbi says as follows. What's obvious to me is Mecheres Ksubasa La'acher. If a woman sells a Ksuba to someone else, what's called Toibas and other rights, meaning there's nothing that's really being sold right now, it's only that if she gets widowed or divorced, then the Ksuba is going to come to her, then the consumer is going to get that money. But if she dies, her husband inherits her. He, he gets that Yerusha from his wife. So, um, when she dies, her husband is going to inherit it, and then they're, they're going to lose out. So it's a risk. Now, in such a case, if she sells the ksuba to someone else, Yeshla, her sons do have ksubas bidin dechrin. Why? Because even when she doesn't sell her ksuba, her husband also inherits her. And still, the rabbis instituted that he also, regarding the husband, when she sold it, she doesn't lose any rights. Because well, that has nothing to do with him. Every time ksuba bidin dechrin is only when she dies first and the husband inherits. Which that's, that's what's happening here too, and then her children get it. I, it's like she was, it was lax in her eyes, her ksuba to sell it and cause a loss to her children. If she's going to be widowed or divorced, then actually her children are not going to get it because her husband's dying first, and then that consumer is going to get the ksuba. <clears throat> but my time, what's the reason? Because it's Zuzan Sua. Yeah, because she was in a, in a tight situation where money was forcing her that she needed it, and therefore she sold it. But it's not because like she's like lacks about it and therefore she's like doesn't care about it and therefore she's losing the rights for the Ksubas bin Indicha. That's as well, it's obvious to me that when she sells it to someone else, she there her children are gonna have Ksubas bin Dikha. Michel is Ksubas Labalom when she pardons the Ksuba to her husband, ain't like Ksubas bin Indicha. She doesn't get Ksubas bin Dikha. her children don't get the Ksuba. My time is the reason because of it was my it was very lax in her eyes to lose out from her children her Ksuba for nothing because why were you Michael? So then for sure they're going to lose it. But, by your Rabbah. The question that Rabbah has is, Mecheres Ksubas Labala. When the woman sells a Ksuba to her husband. So she's not being Michael to the husband. Neither is she selling it to someone else. She's selling it to the husband. For uh, what's called, again, uh, the rights, which is very little. Because if she dies first, the husband anyway is going to inherit her. And he would only take it from her, only if he dies first, then she wouldn't be able to collect. Now, if he doesn't die, and he comes to inherit it, so therefore the question is, is that Is that like when she sells it to someone else, where then her sons will inherit the Because even if she wouldn't have sold it, it would have been the same, and that's the same thing also over here with the husband. Or maybe it's not, it's not compared to Mecheres Lachem, rather it's compared to Mecheres Labala. And the reason for that is, is because since anyways he has the ksuba, and she was so lax about it that you could keep it, even if she's selling it to him, maybe it is more of a laxity than selling it to someone else. And therefore it's more like the case of Michael Slabala, and therefore actually she would lose ksuba And that was the question that Rabbi had. So the Gemara, the after he asked the question, he resolved it, that Michael ksuba Slabala, when she sells the ksuba to her husband, it's like selling it. Ultimately, she's not just being meichelin off the hand. She therefore, therefore the the halacha will be that her sons will still get the ksubis benedichah if she dies first, and then the husband inherits her. Her children will get the ksubis benedichah. Now, Master Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi 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 asks when Mishnah Masechet Zivamos. The Mishnah there is talking about if a woman goes, if a if a woman has that her husband goes overseas, and she stayed back at home. And then one witness comes along and says, oh, I'm sorry, it was a tragic accident, your husband passed away. And they permitted to get married, based on Eid Echa, that's the halacha of Mishim Guna, and she gets married. Then a few months later, guess what, her husband was alive. The halacha is, Tetsim is Emezeh, she has to the first husband and the second husband, and she doesn't get exuber enough for the first husband, not for the second husband. Then the Mishnah continues, as our Gemara quotes, in when Mesa, when this woman ultimately herself dies, in Yershin Shalzeh, in Yershin Shalzeh, not her Yershin from either one, will be Yershin Ksubasa, will inherit her Ksuba. The Gemara says, Ravid, but we ask on this, Ksubasa, my What does it mean they neither one inherit her Ksuba? But you told me she doesn't have a Ksuba when she married that second husband. Not from the first, not to the second. So when she ultimately dies, what are you telling me that her Yershin don't get her Ksuba? So Mama Papi says, no, we need Ksuba's been indifferent. 
we mean the ksuba of a male sons. In other words, what we're saying is, if she dies when her two husbands are still alive and they inherit, her children that she has from either one will not take her ksubas, the ksuba of their mother, which ksubas bin indichran, when they're coming to divide the father's estate. Rather, they divide it equally. That's what we meant to say. She's not getting ksuba when she leaves. But her children, she, her father wrote a nadin when she got married to both husbands. That's an ksuba. So she's not getting ksuba. But her, what we're saying is that her yershin don't get her ksuba, what we call the ksubas bin indichran. Says the Gemara Bamai, but why? Since you're telling me that when there's a situation of oynes, like you told me, when let's say she needed money and she's mecheres, ksubasa, not only lacher, but you told me even lebala, the lacher is that she doesn't lose out, her kids will get her ksuba, which called ksubas bin dechren. So here also, Achanami Lemi should say, Yitzir Ansa, her desire for a husband is what forced her to go ahead and marry the second husband. So that's a case of Ansua. So even though she's losing the Ksuba because of she got married to her second husband, that should be a case like of Oynes. And just like Oynes of selling it does not deprive her kids from getting her Ksuba. Here also, the Yetzel of getting married to a man which ultimately made her lose Ksuba from both husbands should not deprive it from her kids. So the Gemara, you're right. Really, because of the Oynes of it, her kids should get her Ksuba. But Hasim Kanasa with the concert of that's a penalty that the rabbis instituted, that because she wasn't careful to make sure that her husband was dead before she got married, not only does she not get the ksuba, but her kids will also not get it. the ksuba has been indifferent, even though it's an ayinus. Now, the Gemara continues on this topic. Yasub Ravin Bar Khanina Kamid Rav Chizda. Ravin Bar Khanina was sitting in front of Rav Chizda. Yasub Kamash Made Rav Allah, and he was saying over the name of Rav Allah the following teaching. Mecheles ksuba salabal. If a woman pardons her ksuba to her husband, when she's widowed, she doesn't get mezayins anymore. Why? Because tonight ksuba is ksuba. And just like she's not getting the ksuba, she's not going to get the tonight ksuba either of the mezayins. So Amalei, so he said to him, Wow. He loved the kaamatli mishmedi gavirab. Had you not said over this teaching to me in the name of a great person, that of a balaza, I would have told you that this shouldn't be the case. Like it says, the Pasuk Mishlei. Someone who pays bad for good, like Thomas Shulam Abay say, wickedness will never leave his house. Meaning, here the woman is Meichel the Ksuba. So that's her payment that she gets now that she's not going to get fed when she's a widow. So, yeah, yeah I can hear what you're saying. It's not Ksuba, Ksuba, but I would have thought to say that no, of course she's still going to get Mazayim because she's not going to collect the actual Ksuba. Shouldn't be her, make her lose out the Mazayim. A related story on this topic. Yosef Reb Nachman Ba'ula Bavimi Bara Papi. These three Tamil Chacham were sitting. And Yosef Reb Chia Ba'ami Gabay and Reb Chia Ba'ami were sitting next to them. So also who gavra the Shchiva Arusase. A certain man that his Nebuch, his Kala passed away, came along. And Amrli, they said to him, look, it's still cover. Go and bury her. I have the Ksubasa, or give her her Ksuba. Because the Kavura was in place of the Ksuba. And they thought to say, that, that because of the 100 or 200 that the Chum were Mesakin for even a woman who's engaged, that part of the Ksuba is what requires you to bury the wife. And therefore, since she has a Ksuba, so either give her the Ksuba or go bury her. So Amalur Rav Chir Rav Chir said to them, he says, I learn that an Arusa that dies does not have a Lacha of Ksuba, meaning this Lacha of getting an obligation to be buried. Why? Because Tanina, we learned in the Brisa as follows. Ishle Arusa, his wife that was engaged to him, if she dies, Allah is loy oinen. He does not become an oinen if, let's say, he's a kain to be forbidden to partake of kachim. And if he's a kain, he's not going to make himself tamitar because she's not she'ere, she's not his, she never was his wife. And again, he's still to she the other way around. Loy nenes, she's not considered an oinen. And she does not have to become Tamitim, even though there's a mitzvah to be engaged in the burial of six of the six of the relatives which are brought in the beginning of the parashim in Emmer, where it says, Lo Yitama, that it's a mitzvah, that sh- this is not one of them because it's not She'erit, because as Rashi points out, if she wants to be a Tamitim, of course, she, even if she's a Kahan, it's not a problem because it says, B'nei Aaron, not B'nei Sa, but she doesn't have to. 
Now, continues the Brisa, if May saw, if she dies, in the Yarsha, he does not inherit her Nadunya from her father's household, because they didn't institute that the husband should inherit only if they had Chupo, or if at least she was given over to the agents. If he or she was only engaged, he doesn't inherit her. Mays who, if he dies when she's alive, she collects her Ksuba, meaning the 100 or 200, or any additions that he wrote for her. Says the Gemara, says Rebchia, his proof from the Brisa. Time of the Mays who, the reason is, if he dies, she gets a Ksuba. A Mesa he, but if she dies, ain't like Ksuba, meaning she does not have the Halacha of a Ksuba. Now, when we learned in the Brisa, Kvarasa Tachas Ksubasa, that he has to bury her because of her Ksuba, that was told about when she is married. And it's because of the Nadunya of her father that he inherits. But over here, since when she's dying, he does not inherit her, so he also does not have to bury her because it's not the equivalent of the 100 or 200 which she has Iksuba when she's Narusa. It's because of what her father gives that he inherits that. That he only gets from the Nesua. Narusa doesn't get that. So if she's dying now, he doesn't have a Chiyif to bury her. Says the Gemara, my timer. What's the reason if she dies when he's alive that then she has no claim of the Din of the Iksuba? Why not? She should be buried because of the 100 or 200 which he inherits that he doesn't have to give her any more, which she already wrote that so before when they were engaged. So Amr Ahoshi says, no, because she ain't any because I cannot recite regarding what it says in the words of the Ksuba. The words of the Ksuba say, like, when you get married to someone else, titli you're going to take what I wrote for you over here in the Ksuba. That's how they would write in the start of the Ksuba. So as long as he didn't die and he didn't divorce her, he never became a Shubat to her in the Ksuba at all because that's only when she's moving on. So he didn't really inherit her from her anything. The 100, 200 never became obligated. What do you mean? You, you wrote a Ksuba and they were engaged. Yeah, but that's only if you have Likish and Nazi Lacha. If she's dying, he never had the obligation of the 100, 200 to say that he's inheriting that from her and to say that the Kfuch will take the place of that 100, 200. never really had that obligation. And the other obligation of, of the getting in, that he inherits the father's Nadin, that's only when they got married, when they got married yet. And therefore, the Rebchia said to them, it's not true, he has no obligation to bury this Arusa, this Kala of his. So to the Gemara continues and says, Ki Asadab, when Raman came, Amr Shlakesh, Ebn Neymar Shlakesh, Arusa Shemesa, if an engaged Kala dies, in like Ksuba, she does not get a Ksuba. Which Amr Abaya, Abaya said to them, Zilo Amrle, go tell Ravin, who is saying over this teaching from Rishlakish, as we continue on the base, Shekila Tivusech. You could take your thanks, that you think that we're going to owe you some thanks, it's taken from you, and Shad Yachiz, you could throw it on the thorns. Because Karat Tirgimar, Rav Hoysher, Lishmaitim, Bubble, Rav Hoysher already interpreted his teaching in Bubble, we don't need your thanks for what you're telling us. Now the Mishnah said, another one that's nice to us, but none nukfin, the haven leshem, and I the female children that you have from many girls that you have from me, uh, that etc., that they're going to get fed from the estate after the father's passing. Now, where Machlik is actually what the words are. Rav Tani, he says, as we said in the Mishnah, until they're taken by men and many, until they get married, they're going to get fed from the estate. The Levi Tan, Levi taught, very similar letters, but it's up until the issue becomes Begedis. When she reaches the adulthood, then she has to go fend for herself. So the Gemara wants the Rav Avak of the beggar. According to Rav, that says up until they get married, it's even if she's already an adult. What do you mean? But Bagras, when she becomes twelve and a half, removes her from the father's domain. So why would she get fed from this state? Which Rashi points out, both according to Rebbe Andrew Blazer and Rebbe Shimon, that have a machlekes in this later on the Samachesma base regarding the uh, the the tenth of the state. They agree by Mazainas whether you get married or Bagras, then you lose the Mazainas. So that's what the Gemara is asking. He says. Why would you be able to get fed up until you get married? What do you mean? But Bagra should have made to make you lose it. And a lady, I've got the incident, and according to lady, if let's say she gets married at 10, you're saying that up until she becomes a begadah, she's still going to get Mazayinus? So the Gemara says, no. Begi vele incident, incident vele begir. If you get either one of them, Bagra's or marriage, the Kula Mele no one's going to disagree that, of course, she doesn't get fed anymore. Keep Pligi, their home machlegi says, Barusa vele begir. If she gets engaged and she's not yet 12 and a half. Ravu says, Adetilakhin until she gets married. That's talking about a of Eresen. Even if she's not a Bagheera, it's just getting engaged 
we already remove her. Levi who says either that she becomes a begettist or she gets married and she totally leaves her father's domain like Bagris. That's why he says Atsuti Bagrin, you have to be like a begettist which is totally out of the father's domain. And the Rus is not totally out of the father's domain. So his marriage was specifically Nisuin, not that of Arusa. That's the Machlikes regarding Arusa, but like beggar. So to the Levi torn his Brysa, the Levi organized Brysas of the six orders of Mishnai's Shoshkebchia and Neboishia, that Aditi Bagrin, until she becomes the Yeres, v'yimti zemanein the insavan, and she reaches the time of getting married, meaning the 12 months that they give for a Besula, from when the husband petitions, say, let's get married, as the Gemara says later on, that up until then is when she's going to get um, fed, because at that point onwards is when she gets fed from the husband, not anymore from the estate. So says he, what, Tarti? What do mean, both? No, Ella, rather, either when she becomes a begaris, or it becomes, it reaches the time of getting married. So it's either one of those, like we said, it's either bagaris or marriage, and specifically married, because, like we said, lay beholds that it's not enough to be an arusa. You have to be a Nesua, which is like Bagrat, you're totally removed from the father's domain. Up until when does the daughter get fed? So Tani Gama says, Asher to Aras, until she gets engaged. Shavalaz Amru, Asher to Bagrat, until she becomes a Begedis. Tani Rav Yisit, Rav Yisit, Tani Rav Yisit, Adah Hav Yoyin. Until they are, which some Gersos add the word Lenoshin, for, for as a wife. Which you both the following question, Havaya de Edison, Havaya is like a term for marriage. Does it mean that of engagement? Have I been so that of marriage? Take it, let it stand. It's not clear which, it's not clear which which opinion that Bryce was going like, which was we said as a machleik is tanoim. If it's up until you get engaged or up until you get married. Now, continue on this theme. Amalei Rav Chizla of Yisur. To Mishvilach Menid Rav Yehuda. Did you hear from Rav Yehuda? Arusa, a girl that's an orphan that's engaged. Yesh la mezaynus. Does she get mezaynus from the brothers, or in la mezaynus does she not get mezaynus from the brothers? Which place discusses did he hear about this machleik that we mentioned before? But the point is, he wants to know engagement, would that remove her from the father's domain or not? So Malay said to him, Mishmali Shmili says, I didn't hear. But El Nisvaru Lesla, logic would say that she doesn't get. That why did the Rabbis institute Mazainis for the daughter to get from the father's estate? Is that she shouldn't have to be degraded to go knocking on doors? He would want to be concerned for this. Why? Because Kibin the Irsa, once she got engaged, and her chasen is going to see her being degraded. He's not going to want her to be degraded, and he's going to go feed her from his father, from his estate, even though he does not have to feed her yet. Because once she's engaged him, he doesn't want that this to should be like his kala, he's buying her all these tchotchkes and all these toys, and she sees, so therefore we don't have to have her fed from the father's estate, because the chasen's going to feed her. So Malay, he actually responded to this, he says, wait a second, in Mishmah if you didn't explicitly hear this, actually I would tell you, I would tell you not like you're saying. I would tell you, logic would actually say that Actually, she should get fed for the brothers because actually her husband's not going to feed her. Why not? Even like him, since he's not so confident if he's going to end up marrying her, because he might find some blemish with her. For the next six months, he's not going to want to feed her for nothing. So actually, I would tell you that actually she should get fed from the brothers, and the husband's not going to feed her. That's one version. Because I'm going to say a version the other way. Amalei, what he said to him was Mishma Lichmili. No, I didn't hear it. But Mesvari Isla, according to this version, he's the one that said the other way around. Logic would tell me that she does get fed from this state, because since the chassan doesn't really know if he's going to find something wrong with her over the engagement, he's not going to throw his money for nothing. Which Amalai said to him, no, if he didn't hear explicitly, Logic would say that she does not get from the brothers, because the so when she's engaged, he wouldn't, doesn't want her to be degraded, even if he doesn't know for sure, but it's his kala. So that's the, that's the machlik is regarding if the arusa is going to get or not. Now, Continue on this theme, Simon de Gavri, and the Malik to remember the men of the opinions that we're going to quote in the following teaching, it says, Shok Zaraf. That's the, the, each letter is one of the names of the Tamid uh, Chacham that are going to say over the teaching, which apply to Me'ana, refusal, Biyimma, case of Yivama, Shniya, secondary erva, Arusa, a woman is engaged, Vanusa, or she is violated. Those are all the cases that these. So the first two words are the names of Muhammad, and the next ones are the cases that they're going to discuss regarding this halacha that we're discussing. Blame the name of Sheshesh, that's the shin of Shak, the first shin. They asked Rav Sheshesh the following question, which was the first case of Miyano, Mima Enes. A minor orphan girl who was married off by her brothers, 
and she did a refusal in her husband, which she could just walk out as if she was never married. And she went back to this to the estate. Yes, Lamazinus, does she still get continued to get fed until she becomes a begettus? Or does she not get Mazinus? Do we say that when she does me and she uproots totally the original marriage and it's as if she never got married? Or maybe no, she got married and she left her father's domain. Some of Shesha Rashi said them to Nisu Lintis in the Bryce. And the Bryce says, Amona, which Rashi says, is a widow from engagement. Because if it's from marriage, we wouldn't say that she gets Mazinus until she's, uh, until she gets, because the Mishnah says, at the Telakhan. So even according to Levi, he agrees by Nisuin. All Machlegis was regarding Eris. So it can't be a widow from marriage, but a widow from engagement. The Vesavi in her father's household. So meaning she got widowed from as being a Kala, and she comes back to her father's household. Or or she was divorced, and she's back in her father's household. Or let's say her husband died without any children, and she's waiting to have Yibu in her father's household. Since then, come yes, Mazinus. All these cases, if she's not yet a Begeras, she gets Mazinus. If you die, he says, no. If she's still in her father's household, Yes, the Mazayin that she gets the Mazayin. In the Beis Abiyah, she's not in her father's household. In the Mazayin, she does not get Mazayin. It's not the Gemara. As it sounds like the same thing. If you don't understand the Kama, they're both saying if she's in the father's household, she gets it. Not now. So Allah, brother, says the Gemara must be Mameenes. It must be the case that they're disagreeing about. It's a case of Mameenes. The Tanah Kama, so the Tanah Kama holds Isla. She does get. In other words, this is what the Tanah Kama was saying. If you have a widow in the father's household, the same thing is for Mameenes, where there's no Nesuin, even if she. Uh, uh, was married because she uprooted it. So that's like the case of, of, of Amanda from, from Arison. Whereas Rabbi Hudna Sabi held no less law, she doesn't get, and that's Rabbi Hudna's wording. If you uh, actually, as I said it, I was saying, Oida means still from the beginning that she never ever left it from the Suin. Then she has Mazayinus. But if she ever left from the Suin, even in the case of Mimeenis, she doesn't get it. And if that's the Machlekes Rabbi Hudna and the Tanakama, in this actual case of Mimeenis, that's Machlekes Tanoim. If she would get Mazenus or not. Uh, one last question, by your Shlakish. That's the uh, the next kuf. Shlakish has the following question. Bas Yavam, which that's the second case of the Yidma. The daughter of the Yava, of the Yavam, meaning if let's say someone marries his Yavama and he has a child from his Yavama, a daughter. Yeshla Mazainus? After her father, who's her father? Her father is the second husband, the Yavam. After her father passes away, does she get fed from the brothers, from the father's estate? Or does she not get Mazaynas? What's the question? So the Gemara explains. Since the master says, Mazaynas the Yavamas. Ksubasa, the Ksuba of the Yavama, is on the Sibayal edition, is actually on the estate of the first husband who passed away, and not on the Nechassim of the Yavam. So then we say the Tanai Ksuba is the same thing also, is also not on the Nechassim of the Yavam. It's actually Lesla. So this girl, this daughter, she's never not going to get from her father because the Yavam is only marrying the Yavama based on the Suba of the first husband, which was his, her uncle. So she's not going to get from her father because the Tanakh Suba is like the Suba and the Suba is from the first one. I don't know, maybe say no, even since we say over the Yavamas, the less Lamedishan, if there's no Nechassim from the first husband, the rabbi is instituted that the second one, the Yavim, will have to give a ksuba from his own estate because we don't want it to be just easy in the eyes of the Yavim just to get rid of her. But there has to be a ksuba. So maybe Isla. So maybe we, she would also get the Tanai ksuba that her daughter would get fed from the Yavim. And Taisa says a lot of the cases that we have, we could ask in this interesting case of Yavim. You want to take a listen, it's not clear what the Allah is going to be in that case. If she's going to get the Mazayinus as it's Nag Suba from her father or not because really the Ksuba is on the first husband on her uncle which was her mother's first husband so it's not like clear what the love is going to be in that case thank you anytime but what not they be Mechayev to feed her because it's a sister? what? what not they be Mechayev to, to 